welcome back to the Master Trams YouTube channel. Today is what I've been promising for a very long time an updated tutorial to True Football 3. The only reason I actually thought of making this video was because I'm actually top of Google search for True Football 3 tutorial. So, kind of makes sense that I have the video at the top of search results be an actual tutorial and not just the second video ever made by me. So then, what we are doing in this video so we're going to be going through absolutely every single option in the game and, well, we're going to explain what everything is about. So why don't we get started? What you're watching now is the home screen. You have six options, new game, load game, well, language, that says English, the editor, the about, and achievements. First off, let's go into the achievements. Basically, this is a list of all your achievements. At the top, it gives you the total points you've earned for achievements, of which I have got 406 at the time of recording. And, well, the aim of the game is to complete as many of these achievements as possible. The maximum number of points you can get through achievements, and yes, I have calculated this, is 101,062 points. So, yeah. you got a lot to keep you going. However, the bulk of your points will come through winning trophies. And if I press the arrow in the top right hand corner, it will take me to my trophy list. And at the top it will show you how many points you've won through trophies. I've won 105 at the time of recording. That being the National Cup with Poiré sur Vie. And finally, when you've had enough of the game, you press this big blue button right at the bottom, which says Submit Score. Underneath where it tells you what your total score is at the moment, mine is 511. Now we'll go back to the home screen and go into the About section, which is essentially just a credits page of everyone who was involved in making the game in some way or another. It's now back to the home screen again. Now the editor. The editor well, if we go into it, it takes you to a landing page. And you have four options. Edit players, edit teams, choose edit file, and reset edit file. This button here resets all the edits you've made in the file. I'll say no. Choose Edit File lets you select where your edits are stored. Now these two at the top are the interesting ones. First off, let's go into Edit Teams. First off, you choose your country using either the drop down menu or the arrows. Then you choose if we then you choose a division in that country using the arrows or 
Okay, no, just the arrows. And then you choose your club. Again, you can use the arrows or you can use the drop down menu. Then you've got edit league name. If we go to England, I can change this to be the Premier League. And just like that, it's changed. Edit name. I can edit the name of the clubs, like I can just add Arsenal FC. Or hold on, where's the. So yeah, these are all already edited. Edit Team Emblem, you can download a logo for the club and set that to be the logo. And swap with a team, again, we'll use Arsenal as our. If you select the division, let's say swap it and then select the club. Let's say Blackpool. So then, Blackpool's in the first division, and Arsenal's in the third division. No, we don't want to save those changes. Now then, edit players, if we click on it, again, you select a club through the same process of country, with a drop down menu, division, and club. Then you select which player within the team. Again, if we go to England, it's like with Aston Villa. You can select a player. Now you've got three options out down at the bottom. You've got move which, just like moving clubs, will move the players. You've got the delete, which just wipes them off the surface of the world. And then you've got edit. And you can change their name, nationality, preferred position, second position, age and skill level. Now at the very bottom, you've got new player. And, well, you can edit everything from name, nationality, same as if you're editing a player. So now let's go to language, which involves going back to the home screen. You can select any language from Bulgarian, Bosnian, Catalonian, Czech, German, Greek, English, Spanish, French, Croatian. No, you can probably see the flags there. I don't need to read them out. We'll just select English. Load game is where you load previous games. As you can see, I've got my MLS Adventure save and my FC Nod save, which is a bankrupted rebuild. Now we go to New Game, the last of the six options. So again, choose your club through the same process. We'll go to England again. And yeah, we'll just use Aston Villa as our guinea pig. Then you select whether to use edited names of players or randomly generated player names. Edited will be the ones in the database that comes with the game, randomly generated will be randomly generated. Uh, other things to notice here, the star rating of a club, which you can change over time if, you've, if you're particularly successful or unsuccessful with a club. The starting balance for Aston Villa is 70 million and the stadium capacity which for Villa Park apparently is 42,800 people. 
So then, we, we shall start this game with Aston Villa as our guinea pig. Just to show you the in-game options. And yes, it can take a while to load a new game. But it will take even longer if, you're, if you're using randomly generated names. Because it will have to generate all the names of players. Oh dear, Adver, Adver. Uh, No, this video is not sponsored. I just have an internet connection at the moment, that's all. Uh, yeah. So anyway. Here is your home screen. You have got... Six... Nine different options. And we'll go through all of them. First off, we'll go into team where you are presented with a further eight options. Squad lets you view your squad, allows you to select your team, it's like we can remove him from goalie. You can view age, shape, contract end, second position, value, condition, which is like fitness, morale, and age. Shape, by the way, is also known as form in the real world. Here in options, you've got clear the team so that you've got a blank worksheet and can start selecting your ideal team. You can sort the team. So if we do that, you'll see it sorts them into position. And you can release the players. And then you get this checkbox. So you can choose which players you wish to release. I won't release any. Now then, if we go back, tactics. You can change your formation using arrows. And is there... No, there isn't a drop-down menu. You can change your team orders. Again, using the arrows. And you can... Yeah. Here, you've got gameplay pressing, time racing, and offside traps. Gameplay is... How offensive or defensive you are when on the ball. Pressing is how quickly you want your team to regain the ball. And time wasting is well. Do you want your team to time waste? And offside traps is do you want your defence to play with your offside trap? Use the arrows again and you've got your individual orders. And with individual orders, you've got passes, either long, mixed, or short. You've got your shots, which are coming never, sometimes, often, or always. Dribbling, never, sometimes, or often. Tackling, you've got normal, aggressive, or light. Diving, never, sometimes, or often. Corner kicks, if the options are execute, penalty area, or stay away. Far free kicks, again, execute, penalty area, and stay away. Close free kicks, identical. Penalty kicks, either execute or stay away. Then captain, yes or no. Now we go back, and we'll go into training. You've got your training sessions setting training settings with fitness, ball possession, set pieces, 
attacking, defending, and mental. And obviously these are all attributes for your players will need. Then you've got training camps. Again, you can use the arrows as so. And it'll tell you the, and the cost will fluctuate as well the weather conditions at the bottom here. Then you can press OK to accept. And here is an explanation of what training camps do. During camps, all the training modifiers are raised, which makes your training more effective. It also raises morale of your players and lets you play some friendlies with local teams. So now we'll go on to training results, where you've got an overview, which is how have they changed in their skill level, which is out of 99. And then you've got details, which shows when a player has improved in a certain attribute, which includes fitness, ball possession, set pieces, attacking, defending, and mental. So now, if we go into back to the menu, we can go into youth teams. So you've got the option to create a new team. Then you either select the age and select the coach you want, or like we have now, you get told that you don't have any spare coaches. Then you can view each youth team by just tapping on them. You can view your players, and for under 17 and upwards, you have got the option to move to first team, but through all the youth teams you create, you've got the option to release. You've got then training sessions, which includes monthly spending and the coach you currently have. And then training results, very similar to in the training session section. Now we have friendlies, where you can either arrange friendly matches and view the friendlies you've got coming up or you can accept friendly offers using the arrows. Now then transfers is where you're going to be spending the bulk of your time in this section at least. And you've got the search for players and you can search for a specific player using the name you can search for players in a particular club. You can select the nationality of the players using the drop-down menu or arrows. You can select their preferred position using the arrows. You can set the minimum age and the maximum age, minimum skill level and maximum skill level. And then you can either include edited or exclude edited. Same for randomly generated players. And then clear or accept searches. And it will search for you. Then using this arrow in the top right, you can view the offers you have received. And then again, clicking the arrows, you, you can view the offers you have made. So now if we go into the locker room, you can view a player's status within the team, such as if two players are quarrelling, if two players are particularly good friends, or if a player is particularly well respected by the team. Then you've got team integration, you can either organise a dinner or you can organise a party. Parties are more effective but come with more side effects whereas dinners are a safer option but don't have as big an effect. Then into scouting you can view the scouts and their current assignments. If you go into assign scout reports you then select their region 
select the duration and select the financing and then either cancel or accept and in the bottom you can view their current recommendations now if we go back to the home screen we'll go into the office section and your sponsorships where you can view your current sponsorship off sponsorships and your current sponsorship offers job offers you can accept various job offers club sa club staff you can view the staff you currently have you can terminate their contracts and you can search for new staff staff include goalkeeper trainer youth trainer scout doctor physiotherapist mar or marketers then if we go into the fans section you can view their mood at the top. You can view their favorite players, their major rivals, and their other rivals. You can also change the number of donations they get. And then stadium, you can view the stadium capacity. You can change the stadium capacity by clicking on these spanner and hammers. You can also change the number of employees, like so. And if we view the description, you can control the amount of people working at the stadium. Hiring more shop and gastronomy assistants can improve your income during matches. If your stadium is big enough to attract tourists, you will also need guides to provide them some tours. Security staff can prevent bad behaviour from aggressive fans. Better hire some, as penalties can be much more hurtful. By penalties, they mean fines. And as your stadium grows, it will also need more people to take care of it, or to maintain it. If you don't have any enough staff, it can cause damage to the stadium, breakdowns, maybe a collapse of a stand or two and you can also change your ticket prices so now if we go into the account balance and you can view the overall bank account and the details of this month's expenditure and income then the businessman is essentially watch a video to get a cash boost or watch an advert to get a cash boost then with a bank you can view current loans here or you can take a loan you can select how much between 500,000 to 10 million and you can choose between 6 months to 36 months to pay it back and cancel or accept now if we go back to the main menu competitions and each of the nine competitions you currently see before you will be sort of sim the same fixtures and tables stats including goals assists, player ratings, yellow cards, red cards and clean sheets. Only in a league you've got table and fixtures separated. Now then in the history section you can view your teams managed. By clicking on them you can view all time or season specific you can view all competitions or competition specific 
you can view how many wins, draws, losses and losses you have, also the number of goals you've scored and every player that has ever played for you whilst you're at that club, including the number of appearances they made and the number of goals they scored. And then at the bottom here, you've also got Hall of Trophies. At the moment, I'm told, sorry, you haven't won any trophies yet. But when you do, you'll be able to view all the different trophies you have. Now then, rankings. You can view the country rankings. If we view the description. Country ranking decides about number of berths for countries in international cups. So like the in-game version of a Champions League and Europa League. If you are doing well with your team, you can raise the rank of your country, so it may be easier to participate in the Champions Cup or the Federation Cup in years to come. Champions Cup, Champions League, Federation Cup, Europa League. Simple enough. Using the arrows again, you can also view the club ranking. So you can view the best clubs and their score. Then obviously achievements is the same as on the home page. Now, save game, you can new, you can save a new game, you can overwrite an existing game, or you can delete an existing game. Settings, you can change the match speed. I tend to have mine on really fast. You can change the simulation mode. You can change how often it auto saves, if at all. You can change, I've already said the simulation mode, but those are all the options you've got. And you can change your currency. And also if you play with sound or not. Then you've got the continue button, which advances by whatever your simulation speed is. Then you've got your inbox where you can view your messages. And again, you can use the next and previous. Also up here, you've got your calendar, which tells you when you've got each game and the confidence, how confident the chairman is in you, how confident the fans are in you, and how confident the media is in you. And that is pretty much it. There is nothing more to Truth of Free. I have shown you absolutely everything. So therefore, I hope that from now on, you will enjoy knowing how to play True Football Free. Now, just before this video ends, many of you who are regular viewers to this channel will probably be wondering why there hasn't been an upload in a good 50 or so days. That is because very recently I have switched to laptops. Obviously Truthable Free and Football German Pro will still be going from mobile because that's the only device on which you can play these games. But OpenTTD and all new series from then on will come from the laptop or PC or whatever device, whatever name you want to call it. However, with the upgrade to PC comes a bit of a catch. And this is where I want you lot to help me. Because with the increased power of playing on a PC, I am also going to be able to edit my videos, which is a luxury I have never had before.
So therefore, I'm going to ask of you two things and post your answers down in the comments. One, what screen recorder can I use that would provide adequate quality and adequate frames per second for this YouTube channel? I'm much more likely to check out your suggestions if it is a free screen recorder. And two, are there any editing programs for you know of that I can use? Again, I'm much more likely to check them out and use them if they are free. So with that, I'm going to leave it to you lot. And once I've found both a screen recorder and an editing program, then the OpenTTD series will be coming back. But until then, enjoy your day.